On this episode of AV Week, we asked the question, was Infocom a success? Taking a look at how software can solve the supply chain issue and the value of AV awards. All that and more next on AV Week. The network for the AV industry. What are you listening to? This. This is AV. This. This. This is AV Nation. Nation. This is AV Nation. This is AV Week, episode 534, recorded Friday, November 12th, 2021. Supply Chain Software. Support for AV Nation is brought to you by FSR. This is AV Week, your weekly wrap-up of audiovisual news and information. My name is Tim Albright. I am your host. Welcome back uh, to at least a somewhat semblance of normality. Uh, spent two weeks showing you the latest and greatest from Infocom. Uh, and while me and one of my other guests got to gallivant over to London, uh, we'll talk about that in a second. First and foremost, Jen Steinhardt, great to see her, and I will uh, get to see her in person uh, in a few weeks. So how how are you, ma'am? Thanks for having me, Tim. Absolutely. Uh, also with us is Mr. Chaz Porter. Chaz uh, is up by uh, New Boston, not New Boston Way, Boston Way. How are you, sir? I'm doing great, Tim. Thanks for having me on. I try to combine New England and Boston at this anyhow. Uh, and last but not least, my travel buddy uh, for the UK last week, Mr. Chris Netto. Welcome, sir. How are you doing? Does my British accent come across a little better this week? No, you still sound like you're from New Jersey. So, yeah. All right. which there's nothing wrong with that, I guess. Let, cheerio. Let's um, go. Cheer, cheerio. Yeah. Uh, we'll talk about some Twitter stuff in a second. But first and foremost, before we even get into the um, into the stories, uh, congratulations to Mr. Neto, who as a personal uh, accomplishment has topped 10,000 followers on Twitter. Uh, actually, just yesterday or today. today. Uh, welcome, sir. Big news today. Congratulations. Yeah, so. and it, it, it was unexpected, but uh, for those that are wondering, it's I've been on this uh, platform now for 10 years. It didn't happen overnight. It's not a magical thing that happened, but you know, now I'm waiting to see what happens with the magical number of 10,000. Does that open up you know, the forbidden door, do I, do, 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 am I allowed to get a blue check mark now? Does it give me a little bit of validity You're not towards Twitter? Twitter? Of course no, I'm not. No. After they see my early no. tweets in the early days, yeah. anti-pineapple movement that I have going. So you never know. <laughs> also explains why Mr. Neto uh, did a presentation at Midwich um, in the UK on social media and marketing and branding. So, yeah, that kind of a thing. Uh, first story comes to us actually from our own website, avnation.tv. It was a press release put out by Infocom, by Avixa, uh, saying that, quote, unquote, after 28 months without an in-person Infocom show in North America, Infocom 21, welcome back to the pro AV industry with a uh, counted for 7,500 uh, folks. I'm sorry, 7,335 uh, is, is the official um, verified attendance. Total registrations came in at just over 14,000. Um, I'm going to start with, with Chaz on this and, and, and a couple pieces here that I want to clarify. Uh, number one, Chaz was at Infocom. Jen was at Infocom for, for about a day doing a presentation. Aviation Nation was at Info Infocom. CTI was actually an exhibitor as well at Infocom. Mr. Neto was involved in the morning show of Infocom. Was not, not, was not physically there. Right, so the, the overarching question here was, was, was Infocom a success? Seeing these numbers, right, you know, certainly it was a drop. That is not nothing, that is not unexpected. It is certainly something that we talked about when we interviewed Dave Lobuskis, when uh, Mr. Lobuskis went on other uh, shows as well, and he, he certainly talked about that. Uh, Chaz was actually, you know, just uh, right next to uh, the CTI booth. We could throw things at each other uh, with the FSR booth. So, Chaz, we'll start with you. Um, was was Infocom a success? Well, I'll answer a very short question with a semi-lengthy answer, but, but try to be as quick as I can. You know, you and I saw each other the first day of setup, yep. and we walked into this cavernous building, and I think we both shared our sentiments that we were gasping for air, that, oh, what have we done? What have we committed our teams to? But that changed very quickly on the first day of the show, uh, we had customers at our booth all day long. Um, we were very busy all day long. Um, and there was a positive vibe. We talked about it the entire week. Customers were very happy that our company took the time 
to attend the show. And, and the other thing that I find about the AV industry is we are a hands-on industry. You know, our customer set likes to touch and feel and see. And as great as online uh, presentations are, it just, it lacks that, uh, that intrinsic feel. We got that back in front of the customers. They were very appreciative of it. And, and I'll share some numbers. You know, it was easy when we came out of the show, everybody was on a high very enthusiastic about the show, but when you get back and you look at the numbers, now you have to really evaluate, was it success or failure? In our case, it was very much a success. You know, if you look at the numbers that uh, Avixa posted about the show versus the number of attendees that, uh, that came to our booth, we are actually higher percentage-wise than we would be at a normal Infocom. <laughs> So in that way, it's very much a success. It also gave us um, reason to look at how we do these shows. And one of our takeaways, we've always gone bigger and bigger and more displays. And I, I think you and I talked about this right after the show. We've really evaluated and will do our future shows much differently. You know, less flair and, and more substance. That's what it's going to be all about at the next few shows. All right, Jen, from somebody who, who came to the show uh, to do a presentation from your perspective or um, for you personally or, or for even the industry, what do you feel the, the success of Infocom was? I think that Infocom in and of itself was in a near impossible situation to begin with. I think that overall it was a success. Um, I think that what the manufacturers presenting put into it some of the pros that Chaz was talking about are excellent examples of that, of really doing a post-mortem and, and putting more effort into really focusing on how can we put on a good show. So I think there are a lot of good things that came from that. Was it as big as it was or it normally is? No. But I think that as an attendee, uh, getting to network and still get involved with the industry um, we were able to do that. And I think that of all of the highs and lows of these past couple of years, we should take a moment at least celebrate that. And Jen, can I ask you a quick question? Sure. How, how did you feel about the time that you got to spend with the people that you were there? The, the purpose of your uh, of attending the show was to visit customers and such. Did you feel, we felt we got more time with each party. And I just was wondering whether you got the same reaction. I do think that being able to spend more time was definitely a positive side of it. Um, it was, and I think that um, there was a lot of uh, ability to take space and um, navigate freely, take time focusing with either customers or with manufacturers. So yeah, definitely. I think that this was also, by the way, my first Infocom to be fair. So I couldn't compare it to another one. But having it still being my first Infocom was still a po very positive experience. Yeah, I, I will say the, the, the number of first-time attendees actually did reduce uh, from 2019 to, to 2021. Um, however, um, on the, the, the subject of Tim's right once a year, uh, I was, I, I'm not going to say it was a vast majority of higher education, but I said several times that this was the, this was the Infocom for higher ed. Uh, and that percentage actually almost doubled uh, from 2019 to 2020, uh, 2021 rather. Um, it wasn't a majority, right, of the attendees. I, I didn't get that part right. But certainly the, the, the growth of, um, of the higher ed, and a lot of that was because of first-timers like, like Jen. Not that Jen's in higher ed, but anyhow. Uh, Mr. Neto, from somebody who watched it remotely, um, although you did take part in, the, in the, one of the morning shows that they were doing um, was was Infocom a success? Depends on how you label a success, right? You have 7,000 people on there. Normally you have 40,000 attending with roughly about, now I'm just going to go off numbers that I remember from 2018 or 2019 last show. 40,000 people attend on the social front, which would be communicating out. You have roughly about 3,500 to 4,000 people tweeting. So what's the percentage when there's only 7,000 there? Very few. Um, you also have a lot of companies that took a hit during the pandemic. Some of the first groups that were let go were their marketing and social media groups uh, because yeah. they saw less value in that and they needed more salespeople. 
Um, that was evident because a lot of social from the companies themselves was kind of down. Um, I asked the question, what technology was, was there? What, was, what were people looking at? Uh, and the resounding answer was there wasn't much announcement of new technology, and that's unfortunate, right? But it's also understood, you know, at a time where there's, you know, a, a lot of challenges in the world of R&D, well, not so much in the R&D space, but in the manufacturing space, and to get product out, you know, if products are being delayed, that's understood. They're still trying to get products that were out from two years ago, you know, up to speed uh, due to uh, supply shortage and parts and chains. So you have to take everything with a grain of salt and to understand better what's going on. Um, me personally, I had a, the minute I said, said that I wasn't able to attend, my schedule went completely full, right? So I did not have the ability to follow along online with their live streaming option, which I wish I had. Uh, and the people that have, that did follow it did get a lot of uh, value out of it, uh, at least from the people I spoke to. But, um, you know, for somebody who checked in, all I saw was selfies and hugs, man. I, you know, that's that's wonderful. And if you weren't going into the show and realizing that there's a lot of pent-up aggression of people wanting to reconnect with people again, then you're you're out of your mind. Because I think Infocom, if anything, which nobody wants to talk about, was that Infocom was a big reunion right now. Uh, it was the reunion that people needed, even with 7,000 folks in attendance. It gave people the opportunity to be amongst people that they can talk to. I mean... 18 plus months that I've spent at, at my house prior to going to London, uh, I couldn't have any real face-to-face -face conversations about why HDMI is a pain in my butt. You know what I'm saying? Or why Edit sucks. Nobody understands that in my house, but to actually be, you know, in front of folks and talking. Yeah. I mean, kudos to Joe Way. I mean, he was a tour de force when it came to social. He made it a point to be as loud as possible. And that all works in an advantage to the technology managers who at this time of year, it's the right time of year for them because this is not the crazy time of being there in June when installs are about to start and they're not looking for product. So they're out there. Absolutely. They're out there looking like Elmer Fudd. It is rabbit season and they're looking for stuff to find. Uh, if you don't know that reference, please go wiki it because uh, I just realized a lot of millennials may not know that one. So anyway, so kudos to, to what was going on. I have a mixed review. Uh, I think Infocom, you know, wanted to do the show and they did it. And I think for the people that went there is great. You take the value that you personally, Jen, went there for. And Chaz, you take your, your numbers and the value that you guys have extracted out of it. You look at it and see how it works. It does make sense. The numbers make sense in that if you have a lower attendance but get higher quality hits, then it does add up, Right. I'm just not here to justify, you know, if you spent $5 and you spent $1,000, what makes that more valuable to you? But you can all extract little bits and pieces of whatever you need to make it that. I just, I'm, I'm just bored of being down on, on, on the whole subject of pandemic at this point. Let's move to the next topic. Well, I, we, we will hear in a second. Uh, as we wrap up here, I, I will say I learned something as from a, an exhibitor side this year. Your ROI is dependent on, on your company. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and Chaz has a different ROI than Jen does and there's a different ROI than CTI does. Um, our early numbers, we, we have two uh, new new clients that we talk to directly on the show floor that are that are realizing um, relationships with as we speak right now. And we're only two weeks yeah. out out of the show. So, you know, it depends on, on who you are and, and where you're you're coming from. Your ROI could very well be different. So your your definition of success is different. Is, is there, you going. also, and I have to add this, Tim, uh, as somebody who has worked on the show floor as as uh, an exhibitor as well, it makes you rethink. The staffs that went there from a manu manufacturer's uh, perspective, I'm sure Chaz can agree that it was a reduced size staff, right? If you normally send 100, you're yeah, not absolutely. sending 100 to this show. You got to be picky and choosing what this actually should a lesson learned for a lot of folks that are exhibiting, you should be picky and choosy about who you're sending, right? Because if you are going to send people that are that are active, that are that are social, that can drive the relationships, I think that's what has that that made a key for a lot of folks. If you send your best engineers and they don't know how to talk to folks because the engineers just know engineering and don't know how to how to bring forth somebody who hasn't seen another AV person in 18 months, you could have been in for a pretty bad surprise. So like you said, everybody's value is going to be different, but I think you're going to now start in 2022, you're going to see almost like a personality profile start going into 
you know, if we're going to send people out there, let's bring in people that are going to be, you know, the, have the ability to talk, get into the halls and talk to folks and bring them in because not everybody is going to feel good in approaching. So that's yeah. something that I think is going to play into 2022. And again, 2022 is going to continue the whole networking theme that uh, I, I know manufacturers want to talk tech, but there's going to be a lot of people that have missed Infocom now, at least 35,000 that weren't there are going to show up in the desert looking for something to do and somebody to talk to and to share their experience over the past two years. So, Thanks so much for watching this first segment of AV Week. To check out the rest of the episode for free, click on the link below or go by the website, avnation.tv. That's avnation.tv.